so this is a bit late. Um, some of this info comes from like last week, from like the 17th or something, but I got some fucking metal news that I thought I'd drop on you guys. Um, because I was just, you know, reading around and, you know, listening to XM Radio, and I heard a lot of, you know, interesting things that, you know, I figured you guys would want to know. Um, first is uh, Black Sabbath cancels all their European dates, uh, except for Download Festival. Um, the rest of the shows will be played, but not by Sabbath. Um, it'll be Ozzy and Friends or something fucking retarded, which... Uh, the lineup isn't complete, but what they have listed is Ozzy, Zach Wilde, and Geezer Butler. Other uh, guests may include Slash. It's been talked about, so that could possibly happen. Um, not really sure how I feel about that, even though, you know, I don't live in Europe, so it doesn't really affect me, but at the same time, it's kind of shitty that they, you know, canceled all that and then they, you know, replaced it with just Ozzy and a bunch of other stuff. I guess, you know, they didn't want to piss off a bunch of promoters and a bunch of you know, fans or whatever, because last year they canceled all the European dates because, you know, uh, Ronnie got sick, so it's kind of the same thing with, uh, with, uh, Tony being sick and going through chemo and all that, um, and, uh, Bill Ward's trying to reach a contract negotiation, um, he's staying positive about all that, which is good to hear, um, still says that they're, like, best friends, and, you know, hopefully this will work out for him, because, you know, it's kind of fucked up, you know, they're squabbling over money after all these years. You know, I just think, you know, I'm kind of with him, though. I'd be a little upset if I didn't get as much recognition as, you know, the other three members of the band because, I mean, without him, you know, it's not just him, it's the whole band that makes Sabbath, but, you know, without him, we'd definitely be missing something, something, you know, that's a really big part of Sabbath. And I think it's kind of fucked up that, you know, this is, you know, that this has to go on after all these years, but, you know, shit happens, and, you know, money destroys a lot of things, and hopefully not friendships, though, you know, no matter what happens with Sabbath, then, you know, with them personally, hopefully, you know, they're still friends and whatever, so there's that, and then, um, let's see, a, a huge thing that happened was, um, hold on here, uh, Ozzy got interviewed on XM Radio because, um, on the, uh, February 8th, uh, XM Satellite Radio uh, rebranded their Boneyard Metal channel, which I listen to all the time. It's channel 38, I believe, on Sirius XM. Uh, my dad listens to it all the time, too. Um, they, you know, basically Sharon bought it. Well, they say Ozzy bought it, but Sharon handles the money, so she bought it um, and branded it uh, Ozzy's Boneyard. And uh, they you know, play a bunch of Sabbath and Ozzy songs all the time and a bunch of Ozfest bands and stuff like that. It's kind of cool, I guess, but it's shitty the way that they kind of kicked uh, uh, Eddie Trunk to the curb because that was his channel. And uh, he feels like it was a personal attack uh, by Sharon Osbourne for whatever unknown reason. He has no idea. And, you know, we all know how kind of, you know, vindictive and... and you know, mean she can be at times, so I'm really not sure what's up with that. It's kind of fucked up, because, I mean, Eddie has never really said anything horrible about Ozzy. I mean, the, the few, you know, criticisms and whatever have been taken in stride by Ozzy, and he's said, hey, you know, he, you're right about this, you know, about these negative things you're saying, you know, I totally understand it, and, you know, I'm cool with that, I understand, you know. And they're still good friends and whatever, so I don't know what Sharon's trip is. I guess she got all pissy at the, uh, uh, Zach Wilde's VH1 uh, roast and uh, just totally destroyed Eddie on stage. I guess uh, Sharon totally destroyed Eddie on stage or something and he was just taken aback by the whole thing and you know Eddie's a huge source of metal information I get a lot of stuff from him I you know listen to it you know his uh, radio station um, you know I you know read his Twitter and all that so it's kind of messed up. He just kind of got kicked to the curb, really. I mean, he just got bumped up to Hair Nation, which is uh, Channel 39. That's one channel above. But still, uh, that was kind of fucked up. But they uh, did an interview with Ozzy uh, to basically bring the channel up and say, hey, you know, we're this is our new format. And to, you know, commemorate this, we're going to do an awesome interview with Ozzy. So I was actually listening to a uh, part of that when it was on. But um, some uh, notes were taken down about it. Um, what it says here, um, excuse me, um, well, I know at first, you know, this isn't taken down in, 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 in any notes, and I don't understand why, but, um, 
it, it was said by Ozzy at some point that they had made uh, four demo tracks that they're very proud of at the moment. So that's cool that they're, you know, getting work on their album done. And uh, even though, you know, Tony's on chemo and, you know, he's been sick and has had headaches and, you know, all this stuff, they still think he's going to, you know, get through it and everything. And Ozzy's really, you know, really positive about it, saying, you know, how he compared it to Sharon's cancer and said, you know, he'll get through it because, you know, she did and, you know, um, and, um, you know, all this other stuff. And they're just talking about, you know, Tony being, you know, a little bit better, you know, still, you know, obviously chemo kicks your ass and makes you weak, you know, and stuff like that. So he's probably always tired and stuff, but he's still, you know, writing, uh, writing material, writing riffs and doing things. So that's, you know, always good. Uh, he's still very much a part of the uh, writing process of the uh, you know the new album and he wants to be a part of it for sure so they all moved uh, back to England uh, to do the album right now so they're all up there you know to be closer to him and all that so that's cool and um, they have 13 strong ideas for that um, like I said making demos working on ideas geezer has been writing stuff um, they like I said moved the sessions to the UK um, um, says, uh, Tony has monster wrist for the new stuff and was working in the studio today. Sounds heavy, doomy, and lo-fi, but there's some rock and roll stuff on there as well. Um, you know, says it's going to be like the first LP, and, uh, there will be a few overdubs. Um, start, uh, working, uh, with solo stuff, um. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ozzy says he gets, uh, um, let's see. Hold on. I'm, like, skimming through this. Um, <laughs> um, says they get writer's block. Tony never does. Uh, talking about old days, they just played whatever they wanted and people took to it. Um, he compliments Rick Rubin on being a great guy, um, which is awesome because Rick Rubin's a great producer. Um, Uh, closing statement was about the tour. He says he has no idea. This was before they announced that they canceled it. Um, says the main goal is just to make a Black Sabbath album. Um, the interviewer presses him on about the tour. Uh, says over and over that he doesn't know. Um, mentions include Bill again at the end. Says they're just doing their thing, making a Black Sabbath album. He'd be freaked out to be back. He's freaked out to be back in Birmingham, staying at a hotel there. He works out every morning. And uh, then they talk about his paintings and whatever else. So, you know, that, that's cool. They got some, uh, you know, good stuff going. Sounds pretty positive. I'm excited for a new Sabbath album, so that's that's great. I can't wait for that. Um, also, I heard that Van Halen's new album had just made the uh, number two on the uh, charts when it came out, I believe, two weeks ago now, something like that. It's, it's been like a week or so now. But that's always awesome. I really haven't heard much of the new material, to be honest. Um, I wasn't really too huge on that because it just doesn't seem like it's the same anymore but um and a lot of people were saying some negative stuff about it so i kind of just kind of was like uh, i think i'll just stay away from it for a while but I, I did hear a couple of uh segments from a few songs and they sounded decent so i may check it out eventually i mean my dad may have already bought it who knows uh he didn't sound too interested though so i don't know i checked that out also at the very end of this i will have the um made in england uh, North American 2012 tour from Iron Maiden. Uh, all the dates listed. Uh, it'll scroll down. You can see where they're coming to. Uh, basically, they're doing a new tour this year and uh, doing some European dates next year. Um, guests will be Alice, Coop Alice Cooper from July 21st and then Coheed and Cambria after July 21st. Not too excited about that because Coheed and Cambria will be the band. That I'll have to see if I go see them in August. I think the 3rd or the 9th which is going to be kind of shitty, so not a huge fan of them. Uh, I'd rather see Alice Cooper, honestly. But it says um, basically that they're doing um, the uh, Made in England World Tour, um, it, and it will be uh, an exact replica of the 1988 concert video of the same name shot on the Seventh Son of the Seventh Son Tour. So it'll be doing a bunch of stuff you know, from back then. Um, it's kind of another throwback tour. Uh, kind of like somewhere back in time and uh, early days and stuff like that, live after death. So that'll be cool. Um, you're saying all this stuff about how good it's going to be. Um, 
They're talking about uh, paperless tickets, which is a very weird concept. Apparently, you just order shit online, and then uh, when you go to the venue, you bring your uh, photo ID and the credit card you paid for it with, and you know, they'll scan it, and then you get in, and it'll give you a piece of paper that you know shows you where you're going to sit at or stand at or whatever. I guess it's to prevent scalping and other things like that, and I guess they did it on the... Uh, 2010 tour and apparently it worked really well and people liked it or whatever it sounds like a really really odd concept to me I, I don't really know how that's I'm one of those people I like to collect my ticket stubs if I can most of the uh, local venues around here take your shit though and so I never get them back uh, for whatever stupid reason I guess they have to you know collect a little orange ticket and count each one to make sure you know how many they sold or something retarded I don't know how that works but yeah so I don't know but that'll be cool so I'll have the dates you know, scrolling down the bottom of the screen. Um, also, Marilyn Manson tour. I'll just link MarilynManson.com in the uh, description, and you can go check it out for yourself. I don't want to post all those up too. Um, it's only the first leg of the tour. They're starting in Australia, I believe, in four days, and then or two days. Excuse me, <laughs> I get my dates mixed up. But yeah, in uh, two days they'll be starting in Australia, and then going all the way to I believe they end in uh, Spain. Um, they are after Australia coming here to America but not doing a whole lot of dates like they're doing mostly East Coast and a little bit of West Coast stuff uh, no California dates yet so hopefully that'll be the second leg um, which I will definitely catch if it comes here I still haven't heard a fucking date on the album yet and February is almost over so I, I'm, I'm pretty pissed off because um, he said it was coming out this month um, I, I don't know what's up with that um, Hopefully this isn't going to be one of those things where he just keeps saying it's going to come out and it never does, or it just comes out randomly at a random time or something stupid. I don't know. You know, they say, you know, it's done, people have heard it, and, you know, he's just getting ready to release it and all this stuff, but I really haven't seen a whole lot of promotion for it, so it's kind of making me a little sad. But, uh, yeah, that's my metal news for now. Um, bunch of new albums coming out next month. Um, hopefully be getting the new Cannibal Corpse album, Torture. Um if anything. I try to get the new Spawn of Possession as well, so I'll have reviews of that probably up on here, because I don't do a whole lot of reviews on here, and I should. I do them on my own channel. I do, like, band promos on my channel, too. So I should probably throw a few of those up here, too. I just got done uh, doing a promotion for uh, Melodic Death Metal Band and Macroneon, which uh, I've done a review or you know, promo of them before, and uh, they had a new album come out, and you should go check that out on my channel. They're, they're pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, just uh, Keep it metal and uh, much kind of love. Woo woo.